Good evening, everyone. Before I get into my topic, I would like to take a moment to talk about the weather. Can anyone believe how nice the weather has been lately? Personally, I cannot. I'm so happy that the sun has been shining and that there has been limited rain recently. I love to golf, so these weather conditions are absolutely pristine. Additionally, it hasn't been too hot or too cold. The most comfortable temperature for me is mid 60s to 70s with a breeze. I have a large collection of sweatshirts, so I like to wear them more often than just the autumn or the winter. Anything hotter than 75 tends to be a little bit too warm for me, but I shouldn't complain too much because for a while there, I was starting to think that it would never be one false spring after another. I'm not a huge fan of the snow or the cold, so anything warmer than 50 degrees should be, should be a win. Now that you have heard me talk for the last minute about the weather, I'm going to ask you a few questions. In the time that you've been listening to me, have you asked how much longer do I have to be sitting here? What am I going to get for dinner? When am I going to have time to finish all my work? If so, that's OK. It just means that the boredom has started to kick in. Today, I'm here to tell you that it is OK to feel bored as long as it's in small amounts. In many instances, the, the moment people begin to feel bored, they will whip out their smartphone or other electronic device as a crutch. But is this really necessary? I don't think so. Boredom should not always be avoided. Instead, it should be experienced in a balanced way. For example, a little bit of boredom is capable of restoring the brain. Boredom often occurs after one has finished exerting a substantial amount of energy on a specific activity. After the activity is completed, the brain starts to relax and transition into what is called a resting state. It is during this period of time that the people are able to consolidate memories they have made and reflect on the lessons that they have learned. Consequently, the brain takes the time to think of how it can apply what was learned in the future, creating an opportunity for personal growth. This ends up creating positive mental feelings of hope, renewal, and forward motion. Besides restoring the brain, boredom in small doses can also encourage more creativity within a person. Boredom is a variety driving emotion, meaning that it primes us to seek new, different, and more creative experiences and solutions. Let's take a moment to think of a time when we were our most creative versions of ourselves. Where were you? Were you in a meeting with your peers? Were you driving to work in your car? According to the Mayo Clinic Health System, some of people's best thinking occurs when they are in the shower. When one is showering, they do not have the chance to run to their mobile device for a ready distraction. As a result, they are able to take time to embrace boredom, which is shown to be rather beneficial. In my experience, I have found that I am most creative as I start to fall asleep. Usually after I set down my phone and try to fall asleep, I'm up for another 10 to 20 minutes. During this period of time, my mind begins to wander. I'll start to think about the gifts I could buy or make for my family, the music, uh, the melodies I could use for my music class, or dance choreography for the summer class I'm teaching. In contrast, if someone experiences too much boredom, one can experience various negative consequences, mental and physical. Let's use someone in a nursing home as an example. Boredom, like stress, is said to put pressure on the heart and the circulatory system as a whole. As a result, the nursing home patient is more at risk of having a heart attack if they have experienced a chronic amount of boredom. Additionally, because the heart and circulatory system are experiencing some pressure, the patient may have a lowered immunity, making them more susceptible to illness. On the mental front of things, consistent boredom may lead both the old and the young to experience depression. Depending on the severity of the depression, one might turn to smoking, alcohol misuse, or substance abuse. Consequently, these lifestyle choices could lead to more long-term health issues like heart disease, that eventually could lead to death. As my time with you comes to, to an end, I hope you choose to reflect on the role boredom plays in your life and how you choose to balance it. Are you the person that fills their time to the brim, afraid of what will happen in the still and silent moments? Or are you the person who takes the time to marinate in their wandering thoughts when given the chance? 
I'm not here to lecture you claiming that you should spend all your time bored, but I encourage you all to take 10 minutes out of your busy schedule to be bored. I promise you will reap the benefits. Thank you so much for your time and have a good night.